The mission of the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation is to sustain, restore, and enhance the nation's fish, wildlife, plants, and habitats for current and future generations. The foundation accomplishes its mission by bringing together a diverse group of funding partners and grantees to address conservation challenges. Killer whales are, uh, are an iconic species of animal. Around the world, people have, are just incredibly interested and attracted to the species. And here in the Pacific Northwest, we're lucky enough to be in a place where we can see them swing by quite often. We know that if they're having difficulty, they're affected by human activities in many ways. I can't overemphasize how critical the situation is right now for the southern resident killer whales. Only 78 animals, lots and lots of challenges. But on the positive side, we've got a research community that's very motivated and well-equipped now to tackle a lot of the problems and understand them better. So there's a lot of positive momentum at this particular point in time. The National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, in partnership with SeaWorld Shell Oil Company, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and NOAA, are funding grants in strategic areas in order to aid and recover this iconic species. Our job at SeaWorld is about much more than just introducing the population to killer whales. We really are concerned about what's happening with these populations in the wild. Because of that, we partner with conservation organizations as well as biologists and researchers throughout the world, but especially in the Pacific Northwest, to look at ways that we can improve the lives of the killer whales that live there. The work that we're doing today may seem unrelated, but all of these projects come together to aid in one thing, to increase the populations of Chinook salmon, the number one prey species for the killer whales. The Chinook populations have declined up to tenfold in the Salish Sea. This is a serious problem for killer whales because their diet consists of over 80% of Chinook from this region in the summer. We have found strong correlations between the community structure of zooplankton and salmon survival. Understanding zooplankton is important to getting a handle on what is driving the survival of salmon. We're working towards a future with more salmon and thus more prey for killer whales. Before we started the photogrammetry work, the only way we could tell how killer whales were responding to, to shortages in food was by counting the, the mortalities, really. Looking at them from above gives us an entirely different perspective. We can see how wide they are. We can see their entire shape. We can see whether they're pregnant or not. And we can detect very fine scale differences in body condition much more reliably than we ever could looking at them from the side. So with photogrammetry, we're able to get a lot more data. We're able to look at these very fine scale changes in body condition long before the animals reach a critical point. What that means is that we can look at the impact of, of different runs of salmon, and that enables uh, conservation managers to really focus their efforts where it'll be most effective in helping the killer whales. You wouldn't necessarily think that a project way up here in the mountains, about 100 miles from the Puget Sound, would have any impact on killer whales whatsoever. But that's what's so neat about this project, is the fact that we are restoring habitat for juvenile salmon. Chinook salmon are a species of salmon that stay in our freshwater environment for a full year before they migrate out to the estuary and the ocean. And so in order to have healthy habitats for Chinook to survive, we have to have places for them to spend that year. When we restore habitat for salmon, we really feel strongly that we're not just restoring habitat for salmon. We're also benefiting our community by helping to provide clean water and recreation opportunities. We're also helping to build habitat that all these other species of wildlife benefit from, including the killer whales out in Puget Sound. The work made possible by the Killer Whale Research and Conservation Program is a testament to what we can accomplish when we merge the efforts of management, conservation, and research in order to help increase the populations of killer whales in the Sound. In the end, we all want the same thing, a healthy environment for killer whales and our local communities. Mm -hmm.